everybody. Gina DeLuca here. All right, all kinds of stuff going on today. Uh, hopefully I have some cool uh, tips and tricks for you in this video. I'm not doing a straight pour today. <laughs> I know I've been doing a lot of straight pours and I wanted to do something different and so I pulled out my Fluid Art Inspiration cards. And the card that I pulled was the Nautilus pour video number 22. So this was done on a 12 by 12, I think. So this is a 20 by 20 and it's a much bigger uh, painting. We'll see how it works. Uh, I'm gonna show you some, some tips of how I figured out how to be able to spin a canvas this size on a smaller spinner. Uh, but first, let's get down to um, the brass tacks here. What paints we're using, what medium, and all of that good stuff. So, my background color, uh, this is just a little side uh, challenge for myself. I have the light blue violet um, from Liquitex Basics. And there are certain colors that they only make small sizes and it's more expensive to buy them in the small sizes. So I'm trying to challenge myself into creating those colors or getting close to them uh, using the colors that uh, I can get in bigger sizes like the Liquitex Basics in titanium white, which is most of what is in this color. And to that, I added a bit of Prussian blue and the quinacridone magenta and this is the color I ended up with and it's pretty darn close um, yeah I mean that's that's pretty close so uh, it's good it's good to practice that to get good at, at your mixing skills because sometimes there might be a color that you love but you can't find it in your country or you can't uh, get it anymore. It's been discontinued. So if you work on your, um, on your color matching skills, you can match those colors and sometimes do it more economically like this. This only took like a tiny bit of the Prussian blue. Like this is a more expensive color because they only make it in the smaller um, tubes. But it was like the size of a pea was enough <laughs> for all of that. So, I mean, maybe a big pea, but still just, you know, it wasn't like squirting it out. It was just a little bit. Uh, so it makes it more economical and just good practice in general. Okay. So that being said, that is going to be my base coat color. I have some pigments here today. I have some this little piggy pigments. Uh, they have been mixed tipsy piggy style and what that means is I put a bit of alcohol in the bottom of the cup and then I add my pigment and I kind of just did like a heaping one of these little spoons let me find the spoon one of these little spatulas from uh, the fluid art company I just did a little heaping scoop of that and slowly mixed it in with the alcohol please wear a mask when you do this because sometimes it might catch on the bottom of your cup and flick that powder up and you don't want to inhale that because it's never coming out. If you inhale particles into your lungs, there they stay. So you don't want that. Um, so make sure you wear a mask. We all have masks on hand, right? So then I mix that mixture, you know, the little slurry that I make with the alcohol and the pigments. And then I added some mix pouring medium to that. And the consistency that we are working with, if I can find a place where there's no shadow, it's about a two and a half on my consistency scale. It's making a mound on a mound close to a three, almost a three. 
All right, so the this little piggy pigments that we are using, we have Mermaid, which is beautiful. Uh, Constellation, which is, oh, it's just a luscious color. And Ball Gown, I love this, it's so pretty. All right, and then I have here just uh, Liquitex Basics Quinacridone Magenta. This is just the titanium white. So those are all of the colors that we're using. Now let's get down to spinner business. Okay, I have a spinner here. I did have um, the Glad Press and Seal, but obviously my sealing uh, was subpar, and so I got some on the spinner. I'm going to use a shower cap. You can get a boatload of these for cheap at the dollar store. And just put that on. <laughs> it does fit, I swear. And this will protect it and keep it from getting all funky. All right. Now, this is a smaller canvas. I mean, a smaller spinner than that canvas. If I were to sit the canvas on there, the canvas would be touching this, not the stretcher bars. So, I have some rods from a shoe rack that uh, I didn't have space to set up. And I have covered them with tape because I may want to eventually <laughs> use them again. So I just covered them with tape and I'm going to just tape them to the spinner. And I'm going to do half over top and half underneath, like so. It doesn't need to be uh, super secure. I'm not spinning this, you know, um, for stretching. I'm just spinning so that I can get the composition that I want. Okay, that should be secure enough. Boom. Now I can use this spinner for this canvas and nothing will be touching the actual canvas. Yeah, if, if I needed to spin this fast, I would probably have to devise something um, a little more secure than this. But all I'm gonna be doing is like turning at this speed. Barely out. I'm gonna have to fix that. If you haven't seen the Fluid Art Inspiration cards, this is what we're working with. So there are 42 technique cards. Each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube. And then this is the picture of that particular painting in that video. This box contains a tip for that particular technique. And here at the bottom, we have the color palette that was used in that painting. And then these two boxes can be used together as the basis of a two color palette, or you can build off of those. And there are eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. You can use all of the colors or just some of them. Mix and match the color palettes with the technique cards and you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. These are available at my website, ginadeluca.net and amazon.com. Uh, my last shipment is still en route and I appear to be out of stock on Amazon, uh, but it will be uh, replenished uh, very soon, but they are still available at my website, ginadeluca.net. All right, just to make things easier on myself, I'm gonna put my paint in the cup first. Make sure that's dry. Um, Here's a little tip, if you have a cup like this, the water will get in that handle. So I take that off when I wash it and let that dry as well because I've had water drip into my painting months after the last time I used this cup. So that's just another little helpful tip. I'm gonna start with putting my paint in the cup first, uh, just to make it easier because this thing is on the spinner and yeah, you can do the math on that. So, 
I'm starting with my base coat color first. And then I will do ball gown. Always remember to check the consistency before you pour into your cup. The sauce may thicken upon standing. And then I will do the white. Just a bit. Beautiful, beautiful constellation. I am not trying to get these to blend. I'm going for some just nice layers. Magenta. magenta to be a strange consistency. It's kind of rubbery almost. I don't know how else to describe it, but it just runs off the stick um, a bit differently than some other colors, most other colors. All right, and then starting it over again. but I'm going to mix the colors up a bit. But I am doing a pigment, a paint, pigment, paint. I'm not doing pigments right next to each other. kind of wanted to do another color next to that instead of the magenta. I will just do the base color again, just a touch of it, just to separate. Ball gown. Now I'll do the magenta. And white. Let's see, I've got the white next to the, okay, I got white next to everything. Good, good, good. Always good to <laughs> try to remember what your, um, combinations you have going in there. Okay. And I will do the last of these cups. The one nice thing about these spatulas is they really get every drop out of your cup. Very efficient. 
purple. Some base color. I'm making quite the mess of myself. Ball gown. Magenta. the blue. These pigments are just so pretty. Okay, might as well just use up the last of this point. Where did I get pink in there? Oh, it was on my finger. Touch the edge of a cup. Okay, and that is plenty of paint. Let's put that to the side. Okay, that should work. I'm just trying to make sure it's kind of in frame as much as possible. All right, I made a mess of this cup. I'm going to lay down a base coat. This will make it easier to maintain the composition as your paints are sliding around the canvas. If I wind up tilting this, if I wind up spinning it is going to be very slowly so I mean <laughs> if I do I will probably have to time lapse that because a it's not really attached to this spinner and b I'm in a rental <laughs> I'm not trying to uh cough up my security deposit All right, my base coat is down. I'm gonna pop these bubbles. If you don't pop these bubbles, they will come up through your pore eventually and it will bring paint with it and you'll wind up with tiny little cells the size of pinheads. And that might not be uh, beneficial to your painting. Alrighty, let's get this Nautilus party started, shall we? catching on the paper for some reason. Oh dear. That is not helpful. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. All right. Just totally killed this. Just killed it. All right. 
Well, we're gonna make the best of it. I taped it down, I don't know why I did that, and I really, really just messed this up. Let's see if we can salvage this and just make really big rings and try to cover that up. Oh dear. Why is it doing that? Okay, well, you know what? I'm just gonna have to do it with my hand. Oh dear, okay, so note to self, I must tape everything down because I don't know how that was catching on the paper. I taped it down, clearly not enough. The cup hooks were catching. Oy vey. Okay, well clearly I'm not going to be spinning this, so I will be tilting it. Before I do that, I need to fix the center because I botched that too. Okay, so that was um, something. And we're just going to move on. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do... I'm actually, and I don't normally do this, but I'm going to stretch it in a circular motion. I am going quickly because I'm losing my edges, but I'm going to have plenty of paint. And I see schmutz. Evidence of schmutz anyway. I don't actually see the schmutz. And there it is. You gotta grab that schmutz as soon as you see it. Okay, now I'm gonna hit these corners. Actually, I'm going to tilt a little bit more because that's where that terrible squiggle was. Let's just get rid of that completely. And then I will hit this opposite corner. Bring this back to center before I change direction. Bringing the weight of the paint back to center. The weight of the paint is going to be where your paint is moving the fastest. That is the best way to tell where it is. I 
I see more schmutz. Let's take care of that. Was a hair. Probably a cat hair. And the last corner always takes forever. It is very important to be patient though. This will definitely help your composition in the long run. Okay, and now I will adjust for my composition. I don't want my center to be in the center. I don't like what's happening here. I'm just going to try to just to give it a bit more definition there. Okay, well, I am going to clean up and I'll bring you in for a close up. This is not what I was going for. Um, doesn't always work out that way, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I will clean up and I'll bring you in back in a few. Okay, here it is. Not what I was going for, but a ring pour it is now, not so much a Nautilus, but these pigments always look so much better once they dry. And the, you know, the pouring medium, the mixed pouring medium is white like Floetrol is and it dries clear, so once it dries, it'll just be those pigments and it will uh, be beautiful. There's the center that I futzed with. I mean, <laughs> considering what happened, uh, it turned out uh, better than I could have hoped uh, with that mishap. But there it is. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed. Please do like, share, and subscribe and all that good stuff. Do check out the description box below for links to my PayPal tip jar if you feel so inclined. It helps me stay stocked up in supply so I can keep bringing you the content. And also, you will find in the links, uh, the links to my... Uh, affiliate my affiliate links in the description box you'll find my affiliate links <laughs> for uh deco art arteza amazon anything that you purchase off of those websites i will receive a small commission at no additional cost to you as long as you use those links to get into those websites and you will find the link to my website, GinaDeLuca.net, where you can find my art and music and the Fluid Art Inspiration cards for sale. And, of course, the cards are for sale on Amazon once they get them back in stock. And last but certainly not least, you will find the link to 
Our Facebook group, go make some art, join us there, post your masterpieces, ask your questions, get some inspiration. Yeah, so next time I do this, I will make sure that all of my paper is very secure so that does not happen again. And, you know, just the way it started coming out of the cup at the beginning, it was already not going well. So, you know, I salvaged it. <laughs> but they're not all going to turn out exactly how we like or exactly how we intended. So go in with an intention, put your paint on the canvas, and then just go with the flow. Go with what the paint gives you. All right, that is it for me for today. I hope you all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.